You know, it's bad when you have some shit. One of them fools rep and be full of red rum. This your boy, Chop Boy E, man, with that rack radio, man. Tune in, man. Game. So first, let's talk about how it feels to be signed to a major label because you signed the Rich Gang. So how does it feel being a signed artist now? Uh, actually, sometimes the shit still don't feel real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm humble. I'm grateful. I'm actually signed to two labels. You know what I'm saying? NBA and Cash Money. And it's like, okay. I'm, just, I'm just blessed, man. Okay, so I'm humble. Just I'm being humble. Just thanking my God, you know. That's what's up. I didn't even know um you were signed to two labels. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, let's talk about you and um Birdman relationship. Um, are y'all close? Yeah, that's my five. Like that's my nigga, man. I call him, text him, check on him. Yeah, like we got some shit in the making right now. We actually got another video. That run for us, you know what I'm saying? But we got something actually bigger that's finna really, we finna fuck the fucking world up with this one. That's we about to fuck the world up. Like, man, I'm about to fuck the world up. That's what's up. Um, have you met Lil Wayne yet? No, I, <laughs> no, I ain't never get a chance to, um, shout out to Weezy. I ain't never meet Weezy, though. I fuck with Weezy, though. Oh, yeah, he hoy hoy. Ain't nobody fucking with Weezy, I swear. Right. He's the hardest. But, um, Okay, so tell me how you met Youngboy. Well, uh, I was chilling on there with Big Dump. You know, I was in the hood. Me and Big Dump, you know, that nigga was like a father figure to me. A.K.A. Big Brother and Montana, you know what I'm saying? He was with us at the time. And he had brought Youngboy around. You know what I'm saying? Youngboy was rapping. And like, you know what I'm saying? I... When they bring him around, I just knew, like, right then and now, you know, real recognized real. I've been rocking with him ever since. But I was in the hill with Big Dump, you know what I'm saying? And uh, Montana, he was out there with us in, like, 2016, 15. Montana pulled up with Youngin, man. Youngin, you know what I'm saying? He jumped out. Real recognized real. That's been my little brother ever since. So you actually knew Dump before you knew NBA Youngboy? Right. Okay, yeah. and so, um, what was you and Dunk's relationship like? My that, that nigga, that was like my twin, you know what I'm saying? Like, me and this nigga wear the same size shoes, me and this nigga wear the same size pants, shirt. That was my dog, like, and when he died, like, it hurt it, you know what I'm saying? And he, he, uh, Big Dump, irreplaceable, you know what I'm saying? Rest in peace, Big Dump. Rest in peace, Dump, for sure, for sure. Um, so where were you when you got the phone call that, um, he had passed away? I actually was literally right where on the corner. I ride in the car with my partner when I got the, with the app for the news, the WALB app that to a shot, you know what I'm saying, on there. We pulled up and the ambulance was just pulling off with him, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, I was in the hood when the shit happened. Hey, so... You were actually around the corner when it happened. Right. Oh wow. Um. So, what's your relationship with his son now? Lil Dump. Oh, Lil Dump. That's my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, Lil Dump was one of the ones that he seen everything. He he was around. He was just young. He used to be across the street with Charlie Ray. Charlie Ray giving him the game. You know what I'm saying? Like that nigga. He seen a lot. He know a lot. Like that's my that's my baby brother. Okay, I'm rocking with him. I'm rocking with him the same way Dump was a rock with him. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, um, so you still close with NBA Young Boy and Lil Dump? Right. Okay. How often do you talk to NBA Young Boy? Yeah, that's like we holler. Like that's my nigga. That's my brother. We family. Like you know, that's my blood. Like damn there, if not every day, every other day. You know what I'm saying? Like it's all good. Like. He busy, I'm busy, I be doing my rap thing now, so it's like, I might be at a video shoot up, we call this nigga, let him see what I got on, you know what I'm saying, little shit like that, it's, now it's like, we got more to talk about now than the rapping, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. That's my nigga, man. So y'all have like a big brother, little brother relationship? Yeah, like brother to brother, just man to man, like, yeah, like, yeah. I got you. Um, 
Okay, so let's talk about where were you when you got the phone call that you had a contract on the table and, you know, somebody was ready to sign you. Like, tell me what was going on around that time. At the time, like, I was riding in the car with one of my little homeboys, and I got a FaceTime, man. So I tell a nigga, turn the music down, I look, you know what I'm saying, like, this young boy in the stunner, you know what I'm saying? And they fuck me up. You know, so I look at the camera, I'm like, oh, what's happening, mom? So, you know, it's just like, see, like I said, I was in the hood then. You know, I was in the hood when they came and got me. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm I got you. Shop <laughs> boy E, man. <laughs> I got you. Um, okay, so how long you been rapping? And eight what months. made you start rapping? I've been rapping eight months total. Eight months oh, total. Wow. I got eight, eight video every month. I drop them. I've been. Mean, I dropped the ICU eight months ago, and every month since then I drop. I got eight videos out. Eight months. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to stay consistent with it and trying to stay like you know what I'm saying. Like I'm on that neck, man. I ain't letting up. You know what I'm saying? I'm dropping. I ain't reading comments to see who like what or nothing. I'm dropping. That's what's up. Um, congratulations on that. That's a huge accomplishment. You only been rapping for eight months. That's rare that you see someone blow up so fast they actually have a major label come and sign them so early. Um, appreciate it. I thank you. Well, that's a big accomplishment. Like, did you grow up with your mom and your dad, or how did that work? Yeah, I say it's crazy actually because, like, my grandma raised me, you know what I'm saying? And it's like I grew up believing that my grandma was my mama. Until okay. I got 10 years old, you know what I'm saying? She called me in the room like, man, I need to talk to you. I'm like, what's going on? Mom? Ooh, she, uh, I'm, I'm your mama, but I'm not your mama. You know what I'm saying? I'm your grandma. Your mama died, you know, and that was my daughter. So it's oh, like, yeah. I, my grandma raised me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I never met my real mama. My real mama died when I was three months. She never told nobody who my daddy was either. So, like, I don't know my daddy either. Oh, wow. Um, and how did your mom pass away? Natural causes, like heart failure. She was like, Oh, she was sick. Oh, my real mama? Mm -hmm. Car yeah, accident. She died when she was 19 in a car accident. They hit a pole on Airline Highway in front of Motel 6. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, so, have you ever thought about trying to find your father? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I, he, should, he should be trying to find me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. Um, I want, But, I mean, I wonder if he even know. You know? All right. You know, so but yeah, I just I just wanted to ask if maybe um. It but was I mean, I, I talked to God, so you know, I have found my father. You know, I got a father. And I'm not missing no father or nothing like that. You know, what I, mean? I got a male role model in my life. That's what's up. That's what's up. You don't hear um a lot of young men say that. That's what's up. I'm glad that you can um, you know what I'm saying? Take that and and be strong off of it, not be a victim of it. You know what I mean? Feels a lot right. of it. That's yeah. it. Um, so and you had a brother to pass away, right? Right. Aaron, A right, rest in peace, A right, man. He was known around the city. Everybody knew him. He was a football legend, basketball legend. You know, gotcha. he just got killed last year in, in Arkansas. That's my oh, nigga, wow. man. And how did you know? pass away? Well, to be honest, I'm glad you asked me that, bro. When I signed my deal, bro, you know what I'm saying? Like two days later. When I sucked my brother some bread, bro, his right hand man hated on him and hit him in the head, bro, with a four five. Shot my brother in the head, bro. His best friend, bro. Yeah. Dang. Out of jealousy bro. and hate, uh, out of jealousy and hatred, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, bro, that nigga, that he the reason why I do this shit. He, he the reason why I'm going hard. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's my nigga, bro. And it hurt. You know what I'm saying? Pain real. That's the mixtape. You know what I'm saying? With me, him, and my mama. I'm the last of my tribe. My whole family is gone. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm the last of my tribe. I got a story to tell. Pain real. Finna drop. I need everybody to go fuck with her. For sure, for sure. Um, so was your brother your mom's son or your grandmother's son? My brother was my grandmother's son. Okay. So it's my brother was really my uncle. Okay. My brother was really my uncle. That's the same age as me. We just three months apart. My mama and his mama, which is my grandma, was pregnant at the same time. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> now, yeah. do you ever feel 
um, responsible for what happened because of your success? Do you feel like, um, do you ever feel responsible? Do you feel like it was because you sent him money and you signed the contract? Or do you feel like it's just, you know, people going to be jealous and it just was going to happen regardless? Uh, that, that first, I kind of used to feel like that, like, damn, if I ain't seen it. But then I had to realize, and I thought about it, and I prayed on it. You know, my God don't make no mistakes. Yeah. And this shit was already wrote, you know what I'm saying? That's the reason why he gave me the money, so I can pay for his funeral, because he knew my brother ain't had no life insurance. So that's how I look at it, you know what I'm saying? Everything happened for a reason. This shit is not no mistake. It's not. It's not. That's so good. And I was going to tell you if you did feel responsible not to. You know what I mean? Because everything does happen for a reason. And um, God has perfect timing. And right. it's one of those things where, you know, anything can happen to any one of us at any time. Um, if it wouldn't have been that time or for that reason, it just would have been in another way for another reason. So, right. So, yeah. Um. Because one so thing now, for sure, one thing for sure, and I'll tell all my brothers this. One thing for sure, two things for certain. It might not be today. It might not be tomorrow, next week, next year. We're going to die. Everybody. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no, oh, not me. Yeah, your ass going to die. So it's like, that's a part I had to learn, and that's a, that's something in life. You know what I'm saying? Like, It's the one thing we guaranteed. Yeah, like, ain't no escaping that. Ain't no ducking that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, that's, that's, that's something, that's something, and that's a part of life. That's the one thing that's guaranteed. That's the one thing you know that once you're living, that you have an expiration date. You know what I mean? Right. So and know. when everybody start thinking like that, then people will get more accomplished. Mm -hmm. See, I know I'm not going to be here forever, so now I'm working hard doing shit for my family, man. Doing shit for my kids. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Doing the right shit. Facts. A lot of people do need to think like that because it's better to prepare than trying to avoid the unavoidable. You know what I mean? Everybody walk around all day trying to avoid something from happening for them to them instead of just preparing. Getting ready for it. Right. You know right. what I mean? <laughs> right. Um, okay, so now it's just you and your surviving uncle, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, it's just me and my uncle. And he raised me, you know. He he was another like he wrote my in my life, father figure. You know, he's he's a coach at mentorship high school. He went to Southern. He actually the first person in our family to go to college. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's That's like good. it's really just me and Uncle. And Uncle don't want for nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's what's good. That's what's good. Um. So tell me, who was your favorite rapper? Like growing up, like who is your favorite rapper of all time? Who you like get your inspiration from? I never really, from the time that I was like three all the way until now, I never really gave nobody a chance but Biggie. I always been a Biggie fan. Like, you know what I'm saying? I always studied Biggie Stilo. I've been a big Biggie fan. That's, he like my role model. Rest in peace, Biggie Smalls, man. Christopher Wallace, man. Right. Rest in peace to Biggie, man. So you a straight Biggie head. <laughs> That's what's up. Baby, baby. <laughs> It is. You, but you put me in the mind of him, you know. You had a uh, Biggie, you know, swag or whatever. Because Biggie and Rick Ross have a different swag. You know what I'm saying? So, but you give me that, you know, that Biggie like swag, but in a, like a very urban hip hop way. You know, <laughs> yeah. 23 Biggie. <laughs> yeah, that, and, that's the, and that's the swag I'm going for. Right. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's what's up. <laughs> um, so, what hood you from in Baton Rouge? All of them. Nah, Not for real. Though, huh? Nah, for real though. Like my whole family grew up in the park. Everybody, my whole family went to one school, Capitol High. Everybody from forty eight and thirty eight. Okay. But it's like me and my brother, my grandma ended up moving and stuff. Like in middle school in the sixth grade, you know what I'm saying? To Cedar Avenue and Chippewa. And okay. I've been over there ever since. You know what I'm saying? Like she moved eventually. She moved from over there, but I never left. I always came over there on the weekends, hung with my homeboys, just stayed attached. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it was, man. I'm from CC Lockdown, man. That's what's Chippewa up. Chippewa Cedar Avenue, man. Stand up. And they man. used yeah. to be in uh, Valley Park, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, she gotcha. moved to Valley Park, and it's like, um, I, I, my little partner Q, you know what I'm saying? I had a little nigga Q up there. Me and the nigga used to smoke blunts together and shit, man. I took a liking to the nigga, man. The nigga, 
That's my nigga. That's my right hand man to this day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Q, man. Um, so did you know Ben 10 and them when you was hanging in Valley Park? Yeah. Yeah, like how I met them niggas, it's crazy, bro. Like first time I seen them niggas, them niggas pull up in Valley Park, them niggas, them niggas four of them niggas with four choppers. I'm asking Dump, like, man, who the fuck them niggas is? Dump shaking his head, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dump had already met him. Dump had already met him before, like, we had met him. So we came right. out there, you know what I'm saying? My first time, like, seeing him, Katie, and Boom in three, like, I just, I was like, man, what the fuck going on? I thought, like, they had Snoop, like, it was some, they pulled up for a nigga. The nigga Dump just laughing at me, like, yeah, bro, they was, they was young, too. And I ain't lying, bro. Ever since that day, I, like the same way I be. I like the dumb niggas, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I real, real recognize the real. I knew that one was the real little niggas. You so y'all, um, everybody just clicked like effortlessly. You know what I'm saying? So it was just an easy click up. And ever since then, it's been off and running. Off and running. We've been brothers. You know what I'm saying? Ever since. Everybody yeah. play everybody head up. We ain't charging nobody extra on nothing. Ain't nobody trying to win off nothing. If I get it for this, my brother gonna get it for the same thing. Gotcha, gotcha. So, what's next on the agenda for you? You have an album dropping soon, right? Yeah, I got the paint. I got the paint real album dropping. Me and Stunner got the ICU remix video dropping. Me and Young Boy got the plank roll finna drop. Me, Young Boy, and Ten got the plank roll finna drop. It's just constant grind. Like I got a lot of stuff, unreleased stuff finna drop. A lot of videos. Like right now, I got like probably no exaggeration, like six or seven done videos. That's just not we just holding in the clutch. That's not you know what I'm saying. That's ready. Okay. Okay. Now, Shout out D Rock, man. Shout out my brother D Rock on the beat too, man. Which gang don't bang, man? Okay, is he one of your producers? Yeah, he's don't he, him and Brian Brooks, and lame ass buddy like B Brooks, D Rock, and lame ass buddy. They're my top three. Producer, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to them dudes, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, so on your new album, it's just you, or do you have other people on your album? Like who you have featuring on the new album? Me. It's just me because I feel like it's my story. You know what I'm saying? It's my pain. I don't need another motherfucker to jump on the song with me and help me tell my pain. That this my pain, real. You know what I'm saying? That's my grandma and my blood brother on the on the front of that tape. Right. And I, like I say, it's guaranteed, bro. I'm going to make them folks feel me, man. I'm going to have some motherfuckers crying, bro, when this shit drop, bro. Because people can relate, bro. I ain't the only motherfucker who grandma raised them and died. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah, man. Like, pain real, man. Go get that. I can't wait to hear it myself. Real and talk, tell man. us when it drops, Wednesday. Uh, March the 29th. I mean, May the 20th. I said May the 29th. All right. May 29th. Pain is real or pain, pain real? real. Pain real. Real. Yeah. All right. Pain real. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, but that's a good thing. So basically in this album, you didn't want anybody featured because you want your fans to hear directly from you and right. This one on me. The it. next one is on them. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. I got you. I got you. Um, okay. So now when does your song with NBA Young Boy and your song with Birdman, when y'all planning on dropping it? Right now, it's like whenever I really want to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like we our own boss, everybody they own boss in the label. It's like it's no time or date, I can drop that motherfucker right now, you know what I'm saying? Right, it's like you know what I'm saying? I'm just waiting on this pain real. I want to get that off my chest first. That's what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Once I get this pain off my chest, then, then you we can, can start, move yeah, then I can start. Opening up, letting you figure out, like you know, just letting the fans like, like I'm ready, bro. I'm I'm ready for this shit. Man. I was born for this shit. I'm built to last, man. I got you. Um, I also hear that you don't write. You freestyle, and you only been rapping for eight months. Let's talk yeah, about I, that. I never wrote a song down a day in my life. Like I don't believe in pen and pad. When I go in there, I tell a man hit the beat, and I do my thing. You know what I'm saying, like. And I ain't making it like I'm just so, oh, because it ain't that. You know, I'm just punching in, but it's real. So it's like the flow just be so perfect when it's real and I ain't capping. Right. So it's like by the time I finish telling the real ass F or a real ass story, the beat gone. 
They mix and match yeah. in that shit. I don't trip next beat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No pen, no pad, man. Rest in peace, Lil Fat, man. Never use a pen again, man. Oh, okay. You said R.I.P. Lil Fat? Yeah. Okay. Rest in peace, Lil Fat. I was going to ask you, um, like, did you know him? Or I know he was like, probably like, you know, one of them young niggas that a lot of other young niggas used to listen to, like, growing up. Like, um, did you have a personal relationship with him or you just know him through music? No, nah, I just listen to his music, checking him out here and his story, you know what I'm saying? I ain't normally, nah, I ain't know him or nothing like that. You know, I was just tuned in to his music down here in Baton Rouge. He was older than me, you know. I ain't gotcha. never see him or nothing like that. Gotcha, gotcha. I met him a couple times. He was a cool young nigga. Yeah. <laughs> he was. Um, how do you feel about YB and Fredo Bang finally squashing their beef? <laughs> I don't right. feel no type of way about that. Moving on. <laughs> All right. Um, do you move any different now that you're signed to a major label, being that you're still in Ben Rouge, or do you move the same? Is there anything that you just had to change because now you're a celebrity and you're getting used to being a celebrity? It's like, as far as the moving, it's like, I've always moved good. That's the reason why like, I'm still alive. I've never been shot or nothing like that. I've always moved good, but like as far as like now that I'm rapping, I'm busy. So it's like I gotta be in Miami, I gotta be in Houston, I gotta be in Bad Woods, then I gotta be in New Orleans. All these four places that I be having to be like at least once a week, every week. You know what I'm saying? So it's really like I ain't really stable. You know what I'm saying? I'm ripping and running just on the grind, like just rap hustling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Treat my shit like my business. And this is my business. You know what I'm saying? We state to state, locking in, collecting money. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it is. For sure, for sure. You had a little stint in jail before getting signed. So let's talk about your, your jail experience, like how long you was down and all of that. Yeah, I did three years and nine months, almost four years. You know what I'm saying? I was on probation for simple robbery that I violated. I was backing up five years, aggravated five years, off the five, you do the four. And that's what that was, you know. I've been okay. out here 18 months. And I'm getting to it, man. I ain't playing, bro. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, and that jail shit, that shit dead, bro. You know what I'm saying? Nigga ain't going back there. That shit was just like, I needed that, though. You know what I'm saying? I really thank God for my jail sentence. Because it's like, before I went to jail, man, I ain't have no mind. I ain't have no mind. Like, I didn't have no mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't cherish life. I didn't care about life. So it's like he gave me yeah. the five years to 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 let me know I'm giving you another chance, man. I go ahead and do right. But he could have gave me the L. He could have gave me the 30 out of 40 at right then. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't. Man, like my God don't make no mistakes. You know what I'm saying? That was necessary. That joke was necessary. I know that, you know what I'm saying, I'll never do that again. You know what I'm saying? I know what to not do to go back there. I ain't put myself in position to go back to jail no more because I ain't in the streets. Right. So uh, man wanna come get me and lock me up for a blunt, then cool, but that's the that's that's the part of just gone. That's Open it, huh? blunt. <laughs> <laughs> so jail was basically kind of like a reality check for you in a sense. No, not a reality check, because it's like it's it's just like yeah, I, yeah, I reality. I open up. Yeah. I wake up, man. Like, this ain't it. You know what I'm saying? This ain't it. Damn sure. I'm waking up, looking around. This nigga, this nigga. <laughs> this nigga ain't coming home. It smell like ass in here. Yeah. Boy, this ain't it. People come and tell me, wake up at 5 in the morning, cross over. This ain't it. Right. And, and yeah. I got to swallow my pride out here when I'm mad at a nigga for the not go back and go through that. Then that's yeah. what it is, man. And so... For to keep me from doing that, I just stay from around niggas, bro. And I keep myself su- surrounded by my family, man, and my children. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, talk, man, because I ain't gonna get another nigga a chance to put me there. For real, for real, for sure. Um, I totally get that. Okay, who is the person that you look most forward to working with in the music industry? Like, who is that person? If you work with them, you're gonna be like, I really made it. I'm there. I don't know if you know her. It's two people, you know what I'm saying, that I really look forward to working with. It's Halsey 
It's a white girl named Halsey, you know what I'm saying? And Billy Eilish. Like, yeah, I know uh, Billy. You know Billy? Uh-huh. Uh, Billy, my <laughs> Billy, my favorite um artist, my favorite musician. That's what's up. So Billy, when, when if Billy, when me and Billy do it, I know then and now, like you know, I really fuck. I ain't gonna lie, me and Stoner did it, so it's it's good. It's up, fuck. Right, right. Because that's the you my But um, I like Billy out of this though. Okay, and then I want to take some time to reflect on all that you have accomplished. You just told me that you got out of prison eighteen months ago. You got signed after being rapping for eight months right so that grind is crazy like you accomplished a lot in an 18 month period like that's like i appreciate you that's that's amazing you know what i'm saying not a lot of people um accomplish that in a lifetime and you did that in 18 months so you know what i'm saying congratulations to you for that All right, and i appreciate you thank for real, you for real. Um, when your next show, like, are you having a show in Baton Rouge anytime soon? Nah, like, no. just we just really getting this. Like, I'm just really getting my foot in the door. We got some shows lined up for this summer. You know what I'm saying? We got a tour. You know what I'm saying? We got set up. Right now, we just um, like I say, things ain't real, and we gonna fuck the real up with this. Well, you know what I we guess, gonna do? Like, I, I know guess, what I'm gonna do. Huh? I know what I'm gonna do with this pain real. So right. like, I'm just excited about that. You know what I'm saying? But that makes sense because um you're gonna be really booking shows after May 29th, after the album drops. So that's right. when you know what I'm saying, the marketing kick into play. So yeah, that's when yeah. you're gonna be booked and busy and everything gonna be crazy. Are you ready for that? Yeah, I'm ready. Wow, I'm just <laughs> born ready. Man, I was ready before I even start rapping. Like I've been a, you know, it's 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 good, bro. I thank God, bro. It's, I'm happy, bro. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, and how many kids do you have? Two. I got two little boys, a four year old, and a six month old. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, and who is your celebrity crush? Do you have a celebrity crush? No, I got a girl, so no. All right. My girl this is my celebrity up. crush. My girl been my celebrity crush since eighth grade. Since eighth grade. Yeah. Okay, you and your girl been together for a long time. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Let's talk about what you were doing before you actually started rapping. Before I started rapping, like selling a little weed and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the average the shit that nigga do, I had drink and shit, weed and shit. Nigga, that nigga I, doing that, I wasn't um, doing no extravagant shit like that, you know what I'm saying? That's my I hear you just, were a, par- a, paramedic, a paramedic, though. Yeah, I like, was a paramedic. Were you a paramedic at one point? Yeah, that was before the jokes. Like, that was before my, this was, like, you know what I'm saying? When I was 21, 22. Okay. Yeah, you I'm was old, I'm old nigga. Nigga. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was, <laughs> That's I was what's certified. I worked for um this place called Trinity Independent Living. And, like, um I was a personal care assistant. I used to come to this lady house, like, change up some sheets and stuff. Give her medicine and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? It's Take her to a doctor's appointment and stuff. That it takes a really big heart to do stuff like that, though. Yeah, it does. Like the average um person, they don't. They heart ain't built like that for real. Right. Like I, I always worked in the mental health field, and I know it just takes um a heart. And you know what I'm saying? You gotta have a genuine love for those type of people to enjoy what you do. So you know that's amazing. Yeah. Somebody got to do it. For real, for real, for sure. And then I always think, you know, if it was one of my family members, um, you know what I'm saying? I would want, if I wasn't so, around somebody. So you want somebody care. to make sure they straight and treat them how you would treat them. Facts. For right. sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, so, okay, so tell me three things that would nobody guess about you. And then we can end it. I used to be a paramedic. That's the one. Every every day I, I eat a one lemon. I eat one <laughs> lemon at least a day for my skin, my face to not break out. And, Does it uh, work? What? Does it work? Yeah. And my, my girl said I'm a crybaby. 
<laughs> and you a cry baby. Oh man. So one, you used to be a paramedic. Right. Two, you eat a lemon every day for your skin. Right. And three, you a cry baby. Yeah, I got a song called Cry Baby where I'm really crying on the song like like Girl. really crying. <laughs> That's crazy. Well tell me this. Does the lemon work? Yes, it does. And you just eat it raw. Sour lemon, one lemon. That changed your whole skin complexion, your whole the texture of your skin. Well, you gonna have me around here eating lemons. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I wouldn't make you do that, bro. Who who the fuck wants to eat a lemon? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it's it. I'm gonna try it now. Now right, I'm like, I wouldn't be doing that shit if that shit really wasn't working. Like, I'd be, I used to have bumps on my face and shit. Ever since I started doing that shit, I seen what his name, Dr. Sabi. He told us about the lemon. I mean, I've been really doing that, man. I ain't even got a bump in my shit. I'm listening. I'm on it. I'm about to try it. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna let you know if it works too. Yeah, if I it don't work, I'm gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> I would talk shit if it don't work. <laughs> Chop boy made me eat a raw lemon, man. You know it. I would be like, man, Chop boy had me round the house eat lemons, mouth style, trying to you gonna, stump you it. You gonna feel it like at, at, you gonna feel it instantly, like after you eat, just chill. I say about an hour or two, you gonna feel that lemon like it's gonna feel like all the side around your mouth and shit is like you gonna feel that shit burning and itching and it's gonna. I just can't explain it. You know, like, I don't know if your face itch when you eat crawfish. That's funny. So, okay, so who taught you about this remedy? Is that one of your grandmother remedies or? No, Dr. Sabi. You, oh, okay, you, know, you did say that. You did Dr. say Sabi that. Dr. Sabi from Africa, who they killed, man, who was giving us the game, man. Yeah, they did him bad. They did him bad. Yeah, man, I watched every documentary he ever put out. Yeah. That's the kind of shit I do at night. He I study funny. videos and shit getting out. It's not saying that everything somebody say is real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you got to be open-minded. And you got to sure. pick. You know what I'm saying? You got to pick. You got to do your own research. You got to read this and connect that with that to say that that's true. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, bro. It's so big it's like, I don't want to go to unloading all my knowledge out because an open-minded person would then say that I'm what, crazy? I have to do the same thing. I always have to pull it back in because, you know, I'm, I be real conscious about a whole bunch of stuff. Like, Especially when it comes to like systematic racism, when it comes to like, you know, things that be going on in the world around us. Like people be thinking stuff is exactly what it look like and it don't be that it's at nothing, all. It's called a smoke screen. Yes. We're going to put this in your face so you can see this. But behind this, we're doing this that you don't know about. We're going to let you see this. Yes. I'll make an example for you right now, like I tell my brothers. America will find out. I'm just this, this, this example. America will find out. Let's, let's say China got extra rice. Now, we know that they're not going to fuck with us on none of that rice. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go on CNN, we're going to go on all the local news, and we're going to lie on China and say they shot a missile over here, man, playing with us, threatening us. Mm -hmm. So, we can have an excuse to so saddle up, go over there, and take all them people's shit. Yep. It's called a smoke screen. The whole time we over there taking them people shit, trying to the child of people looking around like, man, what the fuck? We ain't shot no missile. What's going on? Right. Yeah, but we want that rice. That's the whole point of the story is we want that damn rice. Right. And I try to tell people all the time, like, you can't watch the news. Like, the news is either to minimize fear or maximize fear. Maximize. The gonna, news is to maximize or minimize fear. Right. They're either going to make it so small that, like, Indeed. hey, this is so small, you don't have to worry about it. Or they gonna make it so big and it ain't even nothing to worry about. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, it's either to minimize your fear or maximize your fear. It's never to give you the truth. So right. I try to tell people that like all the time, but you know, yes. And then if you get into the music industry, that's a whole nother ball whole game. Nother life. A whole nother ball game. It is. And everybody, you can't have the conversation with everybody because everybody, you know, they can't receive it at all. Right, right. You right, okay. too. I'm just humble, bro. Like I said, man, I'm thanking my God. No matter what, no matter what happens with the pandemic or all this, they talking about cancer. Like that, none of that matters to me because I'm sticking with my God. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it's like I'm not from this earth. You know what I'm saying? I'm not an earthly person. Mm -hmm. If you if you can understand what I'm saying, yeah. 
a godly person, not an earthly person. Yeah, like I'm I'm here, you know what I'm saying? I'm down here with everybody else, but I'm waiting on a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did yes. I, you know? <laughs> but you know, when I get to talking, you know, some people will be like, oh, are you being a conspiracy theorist? And I'm like, no, y'all, y'all just got to look a little deeper. Like, y'all be believing whatever these people tell y'all, and they don't even be that, you know, at yeah. all. They got to stand, it is what it is, and it, and it is, and it ain't what it ain't. You know, like you say in the Bible, man. Knowledge comes with, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is it? What's what, what he said? The older you get, like, the more wisdom you get. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so ignorance like, is I've been bliss. Running. Yeah, and I've people been don't understand how, how blissful ignorance is, but when you don't know, like, them be the happiest <laughs> people in the world, but it be because they don't know they not as conscious. You know, right. it be conscious people, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> they be going through it. Right. Cause it's like I don't even try to unload no knowledge to nobody. Even when I know somebody is like I ain't, I, cause it's like there's too many people in the world and I can't. Not I'm not no savior nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? You got a choice. You know God gave everybody free will. I chose to believe in them. You know I know niggas who don't. You know, but hey, to each his own. Right, right. That's big facts. Uh, I'm the same way, and like I said, I had to stop having a conversation with certain people. Um, because I had to realize that they just didn't understand when they would give me the responses, I would know like they just don't understand, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's okay, you know right. what I mean? It's okay. Is there anything else that um you want to tell your fans? Message to Chopper Boy fans out there, you heard me? Let's go. To, to my message to all the young niggas, bro. Don't let no nigga, bro, like. If you know you don't got no source of income and you don't got nothing going on, go get you a job, bro. It's too many niggas proud. I heard a nigga the other day say, I never work at Taco Bell $12 an hour. Well, my nigga, you, you got zero in your pocket, man. In two weeks, the nigga that work at Taco Bell going to be up a stack on you. Right, right. So my message to all the young niggas is swallow your pride, man. Fuck what somebody think, man. Get you. Don't worry about what nobody think. And tell all the big niggas, take your shirt off, nigga. Real talk, man. Live in your truth, your live in your skin, you heard me? For real. All right, thank you for doing the interview for me. I know it was rough and we had to do it two times. So I owe you and your girl lunch or something, you heard me? Man, I'm you have good, to, uh, good, man. Deebo already took care of that. <laughs> That's what we do down here. Here. Full of dumb blunt, jiggas, and beer. Here. Yeah.